friends hi oh i think this is as good as the lighting's gonna get over here so we're just gonna go with it i'm gonna put my spooky brew back here which for some reason i was like i'm gonna make this it'll fit with the video but i've been having winter ween on my mind all day because i'm getting ready for a winter ween which starts in a few days and i think that's where my mind was spooky brew doesn't really fit for today's video but anyways hello how are you all? Happy holidays. Oh my gosh, it feels like it's been forever since I filmed like a one shot video because all I've been filming for December is for that huge vlog that just came out a couple days ago. I'm never doing that again. But anyways, happy new year everybody, welcome. Today I'm gonna do a holiday haul of all the books I got as gifts. I think I went a little bit crazy just a little bit crazy at the Barnes and Noble sale. It wasn't a 50% off hardcovers, but it was 33% off hardcovers. And then if you were a member, you got $20 for every $50 spent. And my fiance, bless his soul, I am so spoiled, but he kind of just let me go crazy. That was his Christmas present for me, as well as like two horse games that I'd been wanting, like the Sims horse expansion and then Rancho Rivershine. I'm so excited to play those. But anyways, he just let me go crazy at Barnes and Noble. And like book shopping is kind of a thing that we do every time we get together because oh cubby why do you always have to do this oh my god why can you just let my thing be free you don't have to sit on the table every time is it like skewed he's gonna like jump off so quick book shopping is just a thing that we do he we're long distance right now he lives in brisbane australia and i live outside of portland oregon and so we're very long distance just for a few more months though this is like the last visit before this was the last visit before like the final move because our visa process is moving along very exciting um but yeah so he visited me last summer the summer of 22 and we did a trip around the state and went to so many barnes and nobles and so every time he visits we just like to go a little bit crazy because i don't usually buy books um i'm a big library user recently so whenever he visits it's like that's when i get to buy books so we went a little bit crazy or rather i went a little bit crazy this last month but i'm gonna start first with early in the month we went to hood river just for a couple of days but we decided to go across the river to white salmon and there was a really cool little used bookstore there and i love used bookstores they're a little bit overwhelming but all bookstores are a little bit overwhelming for me but while we were there i found some books and one of the things that i found was this box set of his dark materials and i've never seen this version of it before and i was like okay kind of ugly but at the same time like i love it so i we picked this up i think it was ten dollars for the whole set and like just look at these like what am i what am i looking at here i, I don't know which one is my favorite one but there's like i think it's just on the box somewhere yeah let me find it but so there's the amber spyglass i don't know this just gives me like i love the vibes of this set and for ten dollars i've been wanting to reread it but like look at the back here like it looks like she's just running she's just running some track you know running some track lyra is but i've been wanting to do a reread of this series and this year in 2024 i'm kind of trying to do like a couple nostalgia vlogs and this might be one of them because i haven't read this in so long and i remember the end just wrecked me and I also have his other book he wrote the like gray dust or something like that and I haven't read it yet so I would like to reread this while also reading that one so I picked these up at the little used bookstore and I also found the wizard's dilemma this is book number five in I don't even know what this oh the young wizard series and this is another one I'm starting to try to collect for a nostalgia read yes yeah, so I found book number five there and it was just like four dollars and then i was watching easy cat and he on instagram put up a a reel of like um i think it was if you like what was it what is that game Baldur's gate three some books that he got recommended based on that and it was this book the green rider and literally the day after i saw that reel we went to this bookstore and they had this and i was like it's fate it's meant to be it's like a horse girl fantasy so it was 550 for this this one and i was like it's meant to be and then they had the next two books in the series but these aren't used she ordered them intentionally so they were 750 which is still like not a bad price for these big old chonkers so now i have the first three books it was like this in this like horse girl fantasy and i am a horse girl so I'm all about it. Yeah, so that was everything I got at the used bookstore. Then we were doing some Christmas shopping. <laughs> this is kind of a silly one, but um, the store was doing like a buy one, get one 50% off. And we had five items and they were like, oh, hurry up. You can get one more thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get this. 
I am a Sith and this is for me because it's a little bit right out of view but this whole cube back here is like Star Wars related books. I have more than what fits in this cube and I am I do have a bunch of like little golden books that are Star Wars so I just picked up I am a Sith because it was like 50% off so might as well. And then I went to Goodwill and I always like to look at the books in Goodwill and I was that I was there getting sweatshirts for an embroidery project and I found Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas. This was $3.99 so I was like gonna get it anyways but I didn't quite realize until like like flipped it over. It's all dusty right now. That this is the same author as Cemetery Boys and Cemetery Boys was one of my like top reads of 2022. I think 2021. In 2021 I read Cemetery Boys and I loved it so much. Five star read. So I was super excited to find this used copy of Lost in the Neverwoods and it looks so cool. Actually I might read this for Winterween because it's purple and there's a W on the cover. That's two prompts right there. I might. But yeah that was my goodwill find this month. And then we're gonna get into like birthday gifts because my birthday is the 15th of December. So my mom, for my birthday, she got me like a really, I'm dropping things. She got me a really cute purse. It's like an Aristocats backpack purse. I'm dropping things. Inside of it, she zipped up some books that were on my wish list. One of them was Cat and Gamer Volume 1, which is so cute. I've already read it. I loved it. It was so cute. I loved it. And then she got me a proposal they can't refuse, which I'm so excited about. Like, I'm so excited to read this because they don't have this at my library and this was recommended to me. I think I saw Larry was talking about it and I was like so excited. I just want to read this so bad. So I'm super excited about this one. And then she got me Small Town Big Magic, which is like a witchy vibe. And I love witchy vibe books like this. And also the cover is just beautiful. I'm so excited to read this. I'm not really telling you what any of these books are about because I have so many to get through. And then my mom also got me Long Live the Pumpkin Queen which is a pretty easy little read. I thought it was cute and I can't wait to read it. I think it's just like how she came to be or something. No, she's a newly minted pumpkin queen. Duke cubby. Why are you like this? I think this might come after the movie. I'm not really sure. So then for Christmas, my mom put these in my stocking. She got me In Charm's Way, which I'm very excited to read. It's another witchy romancy book and I think this is part of a series that I really like a witches of thistle grove novel it's a whole series um, that follows different people in thistle grove I think it's sapphic it sounds like it's sapphic so I'm excited to read this one witchy sapphic good and then this is the rose and the beast which is retold fairy tales from Francesca Leah Block this one has been on my like want to read want to buy for like literal years so I was kind of surprised when my mom got it for me. It looks almost like kind of poetic, just the way that it's written. Like you can see the way that it's laid out. Yeah, it's nine fairy tales she retells. It's just a little, little guy. So I'm very interested to see how it goes. I think I've heard good things. It's interesting because it says it's a Los Angeles Times bestseller. No New York Times here, only the Los Angeles Times. But I'm excited to read this. I've been wanting to read it for a very long time. I just always falls between the cracks when I'm buying things. And then my dad also got me Letters from Father Christmas, which is J.R.R. Tolkien. Like he wrote his kids letters and drew illustrations and stuff every Christmas. Like he was Father Christmas. And this is like a collection of them put together by Bailey Tolkien. It's huge. I'm excited to like go through it a little bit more and have it around for the holidays. It's really beautiful and I'm very excited. And my dad knows I'm a big Tolkien fan, hoping to do a Lord of the Rings reread this year as well. We'll see if I can fit it in. I'm trying to find cool copies of the Lord of the Rings because I don't really have copies of them, but I've not been having any luck, honestly. I looked at many Barnes and Nobles while I was out and about. So on that note, let's get into what I got at Barnes and Noble, okay? I actually made a list for this year because I knew there were some specific things that I really wanted in hardcover. And I do have some things still coming in the mail because at the same time as they did this sale, they also had an online certain hardcovers are 50% off. That sale is still going on. I think it goes through January. And so I picked up um, the second book in the Atlas 6 series and that's supposed to get here tomorrow. So it's just gonna be like a day late for this video. That's okay. I also pre-ordered the final book in the Atlas 6 trilogy. I did that with the rewards that I got from buying hardcovers and I also ordered the first Atlas 6. So all of the Atlas 6 series I got it during this sale but I ordered them all because 
finding the atlas 6 in hardcover impossible apparently i mean it's an older book they don't really carry them in hardcover anymore so i or just ordered that online didn't get the 33 percent off deal but whatever and then i have the second one also online and then the third one so i managed to get that whole series but I don't know how you guys you you guys did at your Barnes and Nobles, but all the ones in my area are a little bit difficult to navigate. It was giving me headaches, but I am not very good at browsing. I get super overwhelmed if I don't have like a specific thing I'm looking for and I end up either carrying a bunch of stuff around like too many things or I just give up and leave. And so there were some authors I was looking for like I wanted to just pick up a certain like it's not self-help. I can't think of what it is, but it was a specific like author and I went to the psychology section and the psychology section is like broken down into subsections, but they've removed the markers that separate them. So I could not tell where a new section ended and a new one began. And I found the author in like two different spots, but I like, I didn't know where I would find the specific book of hers I was looking for. It was like a book about like masculinity and men and stuff like that. And I really wanted to read it, but I'm just gonna get it at the library or order it somewhere else. I was struggling so I went in with my list and even then I was trying to find Olive e. Blake books and like where do they shelve Olive e. Blake? Is it young adult? Because I could never find her in young adult and I couldn't find her in fiction and I couldn't find her in fantasy and all I, I could only ever find her out on like random tables in the store and I was just like how am I supposed to find anything if nobody's in any spots? It was the same thing with T. Kingfisher. I, you'll see I managed to find two T. Kingfishers, but they were the horror ones and I could not find her in fantasy or anywhere else. So I was just like overwhelmed and very frustrated, but I still managed to leave with the majority of my list. Um, I ended up not getting any V. Schwab because none of her books are like in hardcover anymore that I could find except for the newest one, which I'm not there. I want to read her vicious one. Yes, yes. I want to read her like vicious series but they weren't on sale so I'm not gonna pick them up yet but I went in with a list I managed to check most things off and the biggest thing I wanted to make sure I got were some classics so they didn't have them at the first Barnes and Noble I went to so I ended up going to three Barnes and Nobles and one of them I went to twice but I went to it after the sale the second time it went after the sale but the first Barnes and Noble I went to didn't have as big of a classic section as I was hoping for so I didn't get any there but the second one I went to had everything I wanted and then some. So Barnes & Noble has a whole bunch of different lines of classics and this was the one that I wanted because the pages don't feel slippery like the ones that have gold on the edges the pages are like slippery and I don't like that. So I got Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and I got Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and it's like they're just really beautiful. I think there's only one that I was kind of like this is kind of ugly but I'm gonna get it anyways and this one though is my favorite Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. It's just so pretty. I love it. Oh my god, Cubby, why are you like this? Dude, make up your mind. I got Wuthering Heights, which is really pretty. I don't know if the camera is doing it justice, but it's really pretty. What the hell are you doing, Cubby? This is the one that I don't really like, and it's Pride and Prejudice. Like, I love the swans, but just the colors are a little bit like meh to me but I love the swans and then I got Dracula which I'm excited about honestly the one that surprised me the most was Jane Eyre I didn't know it was this big I didn't know Jane Eyre was this big I had no idea but I'm hoping to read more classics this year so I want to get at least through a few of those and then my fiance loves Sherlock Holmes so he picked this monster up it's huge it's supposed to be like the complete Sherlock Holmes with all of the short stories and everything. It's huge. He picked it up and he's like, how am I supposed to read this? I was like, you're the one that, you're the one that picked this one. How are you going to read it? Like, I don't know, at a table, like a tome, like the big books in the library that you can't take anywhere. The reason we went to two Barnes and Nobles was not my reason. It was because my fiance wanted a specific book and it was only available at um, one of the Barnes, it was actually at like every single Barnes and Noble except the first one that we went to in the area and there's like eight within a hundred mile radius and it was at every single one of those except for the one that I went to first. So we went to the second one and it was to get the complete official guide collector's edition for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This huge monster. It's just, you know, it's just a guide for the game but it's a beautiful guide for the game 
and he's been using it <laughs> because he I guess he wants to know how to do things instead of figuring them out but it's a beautiful thing and then also something they did have that store is the Encyclopedia Eorzea volume 3 which is a new release it just came out this last month and I am so glad I only really buy these when hardcovers are on sale at Barnes and Noble because these are like $50 books and so it ended up being $30 after all my discounts and I love it. It's just an encyclopedia to Eorzea, which is the game that I play Final Fantasy XIV. This one I think covers the last two expansions that have come out and it's beautiful and there's beautiful pictures and I love it and I'm very excited about it, especially that I got it there. And then also, as I think a lot of people have done, these aren't on sale, but I picked up some mangas. This, this is not all the hardcovers I've gotten, but <sighs> I'm moving stuff. Okay. I picked up some mangas while we were out and about shopping there and I got the Savior's Book Cafe story in another world. I've already read it. I love it so much. I have been having the hardest time finding this, finding this volume. And so I was so excited to find it. And I was like, I have to get it. I don't even care that it's not on sale because my fiance and I, my, my fiance and I have a rule. You can only buy the manga if the exact copy that you need is there so like I can't buy like volumes two and three unless I have volume one already so I finally found volume one so now I can start picking up the rest of that series. I also picked up The Witch and the Beast volume one. I don't know anything about this but it intrigues me. It intrigues me. I'm excited about it. Yeah I picked that up. I haven't started it yet. I also then got the first volume of Chainsaw Man because I would really like to start getting into this manga. I was gonna get it through the library but my fiance was like no we will buy this one so we bought it and then i found final fantasy 14 eorzea academy and it's like the characters from the game but in a school setting instead of the like fantasy setting and it looks so cute and i've actually seen a lot of panels from this already on like twitter and stuff but i'm so excited to read it okay now the rest of what i got hardcover wise i did pick up the first vinland saga I had it from the library and I just never got around to reading it, but my fiance is reading this as well. So I was like, you know what? Let's just start picking it up. And we found the first one. So I'm excited to start reading this. Um, and then I got In These Hollowed Halls, which is a dark academia anthology. And it's got Olivia Blake in it and authors I'm not familiar with, but oh my God, Cubby, I wanna kick you out. But yeah, it sounds pretty cool. It's also really beautiful. I'm excited about it. And then I picked up Bright Young Women. I've heard really good things about this. I can't remember if it was Katie Colson who had this on her like surprises or somebody had this on like some of their favorites of the year. And when I heard about like what it actually was about, I was like, I want to read that really bad. <laughs> Cause I've heard people talking about it, but never like had the plot explained to me. So I'm excited to read this one, Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. Super excited. I'm moving into like my thriller time period. So I also picked up A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I've heard pretty good things about this and what is her other book? Juniper and Thorn. I read that one. I haven't read The Wolf in the Woodsman yet. I own it. I just haven't got around to it but Juniper and Thorn was certainly a vibe and I loved the writing style so I'm excited to check this one out. Oh my gosh. Okay then I got my two T. Kingfisher books, A House with Good Bones. I wasn't gonna pick this one up but I found it at the second Barnes and Noble and I was complaining to my fiance. I was like, all I can find are her horrors. I was like, like, these are the only two I can find. And I already bought this one. He's like, well then buy the other one. So I did. <laughs> I'm excited. I love T. Kingfisher. So then I got What Moves the Dead. I didn't realize this was so little. It's so cute, but I mean, at the same time, it's really spooky. I'm excited though to read these two T. Kingfisher novels. Very excited. And then this one wasn't on my list but like literally almost everything else was on my list. This one I just saw on a shelf. It's The Goodbye Cat by Hiro Arikawa and it's like five little short stories about how cats change people's lives. Yes please, yes please. It's so pretty, I love it. I'm excited. Spur of the moment. All right, what's this one? Oh, this one, I hate this cover. Strange Unearthly Things by Kelly Krieg. I'm sorry, but I hate this cover. But when I read what it was about, it sounds like kind of dark academia or something like that. She has to do an investigation on a property 
and it's her and a bunch of other people. There's the sort of telepathic guy and a psychic influencer and they're trying to get rid of oppressive forces on a property and it sounds really interesting and I'm excited to read it. But yeah, this was a spur of the moment one that I hope is good. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't even know it existed. And then I picked up Starling House which is beautiful and it just kind of sounds like there's like a spooky house kind of thing going on. I love the cover so much. I checked it out from the library. They made me return it immediately so I didn't get to read it because I feel like this book I need to like sit with it and read it over time so I'm excited to own it and just read it at my leisure instead of when the library tells me I need to read it. Okay what's this one? The God of Endings. This one, I was watching somebody talk about it. I think it was Carrie Can Read. She didn't finish it. This was a DNF for her. And the reason why she felt like there wasn't a lot going on in it. But I love the concept of it. It's about somebody whose grandfather turns her immortal so he, she can be immortal like with him. And yeah, I don't really know. She's just immortal and she slowly starts craving blood apparently. And she's trying to figure out like, is life worth living forever and stuff? I don't know, it sounds really interesting and I'm excited to give it a go. Yes, I am. Even if Carrie Henry didn't like it, I'm gonna give let myself check it out. So the last hardcover I got at the sale, this is probably the most expensive book I've ever purchased that isn't like an encyclopedia or something. I got Dune with the blue, oh my God, with the blue sprayed edges. Look at this book, okay? Just like sit with it for a minute. I wanted a copy of Dune. I have a paperback, but it's falling apart. Like the paper, the outside isn't connected. And so everything's like falling apart. And part of me was like, maybe I should just learn to rebind myself. And then I was like, you know what? No, no. So I want to read it. And I don't know, I just, this, this, all of them were expensive. Okay. Every single hardcover Dune was like at least $35. And I didn't want a paperback because it was ugly. The paperbacks they had were ugly and this one was just like so beautiful. I hate that it has the Barnes & Noble exclusive sticker on it. I'm afraid to like try to remove it that I'll mess everything up but it is a beautiful edition. I don't know if there's anything. There, there's like really pretty... Ooh. I'll take this off. Ugh. It says fear is the mind killer. Can you see that? I don't know if it'll pick it up kind of it's like embossed this is fear is the mind killer and then there's like a circle on the back like the worm but then it's also about like end pages oh this one's pretty cool yeah yeah all right okay i needed it all right i needed it i'm not gonna put these back on right now i'll do that when the camera is not on so that was everything i got at the sale but then when we went to bend we did a little bit more book shopping hi i ran out of storage so hopefully this is framed similarly enough okay so then we went to bend um for a few days to visit a friend on there and my fiance picked up the second and third books in this series he also got the first book i don't know where he got the first book somewhere but he picked up the second and third books in this series. Um, or, okay, I'm lying to you guys. He got the first and second books in Bend. Um, this is the Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms by R.A. Salvatore. He got the first two books there. He got the third book uh, when we came back. We went to, back to the Barnes & Noble that had his Zelda book to get this because it was the only place that had it. and. Now he can't find any more of them because they're pretty old so i think he's gonna have to go through like thrift books or something to get the rest of them but i've never seen him like care about a book before until this so i'm glad he found something <laughs> while we were in bend we went to a couple used bookstores there i don't have the other books that i got here because i read it yesterday i got these at the pegasus um uh, pegasus books in bend it's a really awesome little bookstore i think they're all new books but I don't know, they also sell like board games and things like that. Um, let me go get the other one I got really quickly. You're free, can you go be free? I'm gonna lock you out. Come on, Abby, I'm locking you out. And you're gonna yell. Okay, fine, I'm locking you out. He's gonna yell. So 
I got Mountains Made of Glass, which is a fairy tale re retelling by Scarlet St. Clair. I already read this. I gave it a three stars but I liked it so I found that there and then yeah I got Never Whistle at Night which is an indigenous dark fiction anthology I've been checking this out from my library and I just this is the kind of book I feel like I don't want to rush through reading and so there's always other people who have this on hold so I always only get it for the initial like two to three weeks of checking it out and I just want to be able to have once I run out of storage once it's over for me but I got this guy so I can read it at my leisure and I'm excited. It's really, really good. Indigenous horror scares me so much more than any other horror. It just does. And so if you want to be scared, but also intrigued, check this one out. I love this. And I'm like, oh, I'm a little over halfway through it and I'm just making my way slowly. So I also picked up Out There Screaming, which is the an, an anthology of new black horror edited by Jordan Peele. I wanted to pick this up at Barnes & Noble. I could not find it anywhere. It was like sold out at every single Barnes & Noble I went to. So I sucked it up. I paid full price and I got this at Deadly Books Cafe. It's a like a cafe shop with a bookstore in it in downtown Bend. Highly recommend if you're in the area. I love that store. Yeah, so I picked up Out There Screaming there and I'm excited to read this. I'm hoping it scares me like never whistle at night does i'm really tired of like eastern european like well i think eastern european is pretty kind of can be a little bit scary but i don't know i'm just tired of like i'm just gonna call it white people horror it doesn't scare me like other stuff does then we went back to barnes and noble with our rewards dollars and i had a couple things i ordered to pick up and i've been trying to get bunny by mona awad it doesn't exist any freaking where it doesn't exist anywhere it's sold out at every store i ordered it online for like a buy online pickup in store and they said they had it in stock and by the time i got there they were like you yeah, know we don't have it and the same thing happened at the bend store they were like it says we have one but we don't know where it is i want to read that heckin book man but i want to like own it i want to have it in my hands i don't want to get it at the library but i'm gonna end up getting it at the library or like getting it through a local store or something yeah so that was on my list and they just i was foiled at every turn for that one i picked up some other things i picked up the first volume of alice in kyoto forest it just sounds kind of cute and intriguing um and i've been looking for volume one everywhere so excited to have finally found it super hype i found this at the barnes and noble that i returned to a second time and they did not have it the first time so i was very glad i went back at least they had that and i also got the first volume of sailor moon which i've also been looking for for a while so i'm super excited to read this one and this one was impulsive it's called even dogs go to other worlds okay it sounds super cute it's like it's an isekai but his his malamute or not malamute his like little doggy um what is it his maltese comes with him when he gets isekai'd and becomes this giant wolf sounds so cute i'm excited to read it i hope it's as good as it looks and then i picked up alone with you in the ether by olive e. blake um i could not find the hardcover anywhere during the sale and so i just said heck it i will use my rewards to get the paperback and i've heard a lot of really good things about this so i'm very excited to read it the last thing i'm going to talk about today this one i've been seeing it around i did not get this during the sale i snagged it when i went back with my rewards it's called godly heathens by h e edgemon it says infatuation reincarnation damnation and i was like i keep seeing this everywhere and it seems really interesting and then I finally read what it was about and it's like it's about a non-binary seminal teen or they feel like really connected to this person Enzo who lives a thousand miles away in Brooklyn and then this new girl shows up and acts like they know each other like they've known each other and she knows a lot of things about Jem and it turns out that they are all reincarnated gods deities scenery change because i've had to upload a video this will be my fourth little chunk of this video and i'm so tired it's like i can do 30 minutes and then once the 30 minutes are done and it's like you're full i can only do like three minute chunks after that because it hasn't registered that i've removed the file anyways i was talking about godly heathens i'm super excited to read this book it sounds really intriguing i wish i'd found it during the sale but you know what whatever i'll pay full price this one was 20 bucks which for a hardcover it's kind of low price at this moment. I just feel like books are so expensive lately and I don't know exactly why that is, but there were a couple 
um, paperbacks I passed over because they were $19. And I was like, I'm so sorry to this author, but I do not have $19 in my pocket for a paperback right now. <laughs> like, I do not. But anyways, those are all the books I got this holiday season. Um, I did a lot of book shopping. I am so spoiled. I am so lucky. <laughs> I love my fiance so much and he knows what I like, which is books. So I appreciate him for taking me on that journey. Yeah, let me know. Did you guys get anything during the Barnes & Noble sale? Did you guys have a good holiday? Did you get a lot of books for gifts and everything? Let me know. I would love to hear what you guys got. Have you read any of these books that I picked up? Let me know if I got any good things and what you guys think. And I will see you guys. My dog is like, oh, he's, he's putting, a, he's digging into his bed. Okay. <sighs> On that note, please like and subscribe. I will see you guys next week for Winterween. Let me know if you're doing Winterween. I'm excited. I'm putting my TBR together. I'm struggling a little bit because my library didn't have any of the books that I thought I would read for it. But yeah, let me know if you're doing Winterween. Please like and subscribe. I have a book Instagram. Is that what they're called? I have a bookstagram now. It'll be linked below. Um, come and say hi to me there. I'm excited to start posting things there and stop bothering people on my normal one with all the book stuff that I want to post about. And I can finally start reposting things about like book couples that I love and not be looked at like a weirdo by friends and family. So follow me there, please. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week for my uh, winter ween vlog. I'm very excited. I'm reading some things that are outside my normal wheelhouse. And yeah, thank you again for stopping in and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Thank you.